Okay, so we've seen how the temperature of a star can impact its luminosity. I mean, that's true of any black body. The hotter it is, the brighter it is. And maybe you even got a chance to experiment with uh, this little simulation at the bottom of, of the most recent article where uh, I can slide the temperature, just like some of our black body simulators, and you see the brightness of that star increases, right? It becomes very bright. And you see the, um, again, kind of for historical reasons, you see this spectral type, these letters that correspond to uh, essentially the temperature of stars. So by just observing a spectrum, astronomers can get the temperature of a star as well as its luminosity. That's not the whole story. That's not the whole story. So luminosity depends on temperature for sure, but stellar luminosity also depends on the radius of the star. So um, there's a lot of math here, and I don't want you to be scared away from it because I'm just going to show you the, the principle of what's happening. But you can see, um, again, for those of you who are mathematically minded, I guess I'll just show you. Here's the equation. So there is a relationship between luminosity and temperature. But notice what else is here. Okay, this is just a constant. So just ignore that. It's just multiplying by just numbers. doesn't really matter. What I want you to see here is that there's radius, temperature, and luminosity. And I said earlier that um, by taking a spectrum you can get, in just a single spectrum, you can measure the luminosity of a star and the temperature of a star. And if, if you know those two things and you have this equation, that means that you can calculate. And I, I mean that literally, like you could calculate this, the radius of the star. Now astronomers can do that too. I won't ask you to do this calculation, but you could. So the radius of a star, which is how big the star is. Now this is amazing. These stars are so far away, you could never take a picture and see the actual diameter or radius of the star. But because of the physics we understand of these stars, by measuring its luminosity and its temperature, you can actually calculate its radius. Now, again, the math may not be illuminating to you, so just look at this diagram because this will be, I think, make it really intuitive, okay? You see right now, um, this is the number I'm going to I'll erase this junk so we can just kind of ignore that for now the number i want you to be looking at is just here at the bottom what is the luminosity okay of our little sample star in units of this this little unit thing represents solar luminosities so this is our sun right now one solar luminosity if i made this star much cooler you see now it's getting less luminous than our star, it's more faint. So that's like 0.2 solar luminosities. And if I made it hotter, right, I can make it like four times as bright as our sun, right? So that's not super surprising, we saw that already. But here's what's new is the stellar radius. If I make this star really, really big, notice this, the luminous, it's the same temperature. I'm not changing the temperature of the star, but I'm making the star bigger, right? And, um, and you're seeing that it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. The luminosity is much, much higher. Again, that's probably not super surprising, right? I mean, it's just like if you have this thing giving off light, right? And if it's bigger, it's giving off more light. I mean, it's like if you have a, a searchlight or a, a light bulb and it's the same temperature, it's the same electricity or whatever, but it's just bigger, you'd expect it's giving off more light. And that's, that's fine. For our purposes, that kind of just intuitive understanding is totally uh, sufficient. So what I want you to see here is that there's more at play in our HR diagram. It's not just about luminosity and temperature, all right? So let's look at our HR, HR diagram again. I'm just gonna draw another quick version of it here, all right? So I have luminosity, which is increasing that way, and I have temperature, which is increasing that way. All right, and now what I know from, from these relationships here is that actually radius, the size of a star, is also on this graph. Like it's represented. If I have the, the luminosity and the temperature, I also know where the radius is. But how do you graph that? I mean, that's like, I don't want to make a three-dimensional graph. But because this relationship is established, what we know is that the radius increases as a star moves or is is this way on the graph. So if you have a star that's like um, right here, it's gonna be smaller than a star that's like here, right? 
So anywhere it's moving in the upper right direction, that means it's a bigger radius star. Okay, so I should put R on that for radius. Now there's another relationship that I'm not going to go into like great depth on, but that is there's another relationship between the mass of a star and its luminosity. And again, that's probably not super surprising. Just like in our analogy, we often use of like a, a campfire. If you have more wood in the fire, you're probably going to have a more luminous campfire, more light being given off. And so in fact, in an HR diagram, we can have another uh, relationship or indicator here that as you move to the upper left, the stars are more massive. So, wow. Now there's like, now really what we started with, if you think about this, is we started with two things that we can very easily measure, luminosity and temperature. And then what we ended up with is two things that are almost impossible to measure with telescopes, the radius of a star and its mass. And this is what makes the HR diagram like, this is one of the things that makes it just like so incredible is that we take something that's easy to measure and we learn something that's like incredibly hard to, to measure about a star. Cause we can't go out and measure the mass of a star and, and we can't even see the actual size of these stars. So what this allows us to do, and we're gonna see this in the next video is, is start to map out different regions of the HR diagram. So that if I measure the luminosity and temperature of a star and it ends up up here, well, that's telling me something that it's like a very massive star of sort of ordinary size or maybe it's up here it tells me it's a huge radius it's a giant star but it's very cold right and so we get these different regions and different categories of stars and that's where the the diagram gets a little complicated so we'll dive into that next